Well, and that's it. That's the end of the planning meeting. <laughs> we we kind of skipped the whole planning part of the video. <laughs> we Sorry forgot about the video. That. But we did some planning. We, we did look at did. some food and yeah, some... We actually did some planning. You just would never know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we are. This is uh, thir <laughs> the third planning session. And this is uh, We're getting two serious days now. before departure. And we got a lot of stuff. Well, what I've learned is we do not travel light nor are we going to go hungry yet. no this is a uh, two food packs that we just packed a box of say, four like bottles six, of wine pounds of food that was before the cold stuff showed up so we probably have 20 pounds of food <laughs> i'm not going with this time <laughs> on, Jack, i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready Jaden goes. i'm not sure where you're going but i think i might be ready too oh you guys gotta she's stay gonna here sit, this time she's gonna sit on the front couch to press for the whole week He's coming over whether you want. <laughs> Welcome to Chicago. I'm David Gray and I'm on the road for my fourth trip of the 2021 season and as I said on the adventures of Bullwinkle and Rocky, now for something completely different. And after 11 hours of driving, we're on the North Shore Drive along Lake Superior, which is over here to my right, the shoreline, and we're uh, approaching the town of Grand Marais, Minnesota, where we're going to be hanging a left on the Gunflint Trail and take that about 50 miles up to the Seagull Outfitter where we are going to be doing a five-night, six-day canoe trip in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. It's uh, been a bucket list thing of mine for a very long time, and I'm finally getting an opportunity to do it. The plan is that we're going to head over to the Seagull Outfitter tonight and spend the night in their bunkhouse so we can get up early tomorrow and catch the first shuttle, what they call a shuttle, which is another word for a boat ride with the canoes up on top at 8 o'clock. And they're going to take us out to American Point, which is going to save us about half a day of paddling. And from there, we'll head down to the end of Saginaga Lake, start looking for a campsite, but then we'll eventually get onto Knife Lake, um, which will take for the better part of two days, and then return to the Outfitter through a series of lakes, but eventually Seagull Lake. Weather-wise, despite what you've been seeing on the drive up here towards the end as we got into Minnesota with the fog and the rain, weather looks to be actually pretty good. We've got a chance of rain tomorrow morning and then it looks like the skies are going to be clearing out for the next three or four days. Uh, highs are going to be in the 70s, lows look to be in the 50s, so couldn't ask for much more than that up here in Minnesota in June. So with that, let's uh, get this last half an hour into Grand Marais, get some breakfast, get over to the Outfitter and get this little canoeing adventure started. Good way to clean the windshield with all the bug juice. <laughs> Grand Marais. We made it to the south of the border cafe in Grand Marais. Well, this is the harbor in Grand Marais. And the one thing that's probably hard to tell <laughs> is how cold it is. It's uh, 51 degrees right here right now and about a 30 mile an hour wind. And I got shorts on and I'm freezing to death. Just had a marvelous breakfast at uh, the south of the border cafe heartily recommended for anybody who finds themselves in Grand Marais. Here's the other side, looking out to Lake Superior. Yeah, there you go, baby. <laughs> on the Gunflint Trail. Johnny Cash. Little Johnny Cash on the, on the radio. A little side trip out to the Clearwater Historic Lodge and Canoe Outfitters. Four miles off the Gunflint Trail. It'll give us a taste of what we can expect when we head out to Seagull Bay. Oh, doggy, you remind me of somebody that I miss very much right now. You look like my Bailey. <laughs> oh, you got a white chin just like Bailey does. Uh, so here's the back 
deck of the Clearwater and Clearwater Lake. We had a lot of wind and chop on it. I'm not looking forward to canoeing on that type of water. Yeah, this is what we're hoping to do is get to here by noon and then maybe do the loop uh -huh. for the afternoon. Just one night here and then we're going to move somewhere uh -huh. in the South Arm for uh -huh. two nights uh -huh. and then maybe Ogish for two nights. Uh -huh. We made it to the Seagull Outfitters. They are very friendly people and they've been giving us a ton of information inside. They recommended we go up to a museum up here and then there's a blueberry trail. Maybe do that trail out because there's a really good viewpoint. Well, major milestone here. This is Saganaga Lake and this is entry point number 55, which is our entry point. Go touch the water. I think we'll be touching the water plenty <laughs> when we get out there tomorrow. I'll wait till tomorrow to touch the water. <laughs> Decided to spend our little extra time here. Part of it at the Chickwalk Museum. Apparently like a history of this whole area. The region has stood unchanged for a billion years. We're in the middle of hauling the gear up to the bunkhouse and we got chase to the car. Could be a bad sign. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a bad one. Makes you think about what, what we do here if we're kind of out in the boonies or on the lake in the canoe. This is uh, what bunkhouse number eight looks like. Room number eight in the bunkhouse. Luxury. Yeah, it's luxury. There is, however, electricity and lights. Not the greatest, but it'll work. We're lightening up the pack, I see. The Get line's this. a little too heavy, right? Yeah, so we gotta, we gotta lighten up. Lighten in the pack. Cheers. All yeah. in the sense of duty. <laughs> the more we drink today, the better for tomorrow. I'm not sure it works exactly. <laughs> well, the weather has definitely taken a turn for the better. I'll tell you what, this would be awesome fishing <laughs> weather right now. We picked up our Duluth pack. We're going to head back up and start getting everything organized see and dropped off fits. the stakes. The first order of business is to see if it all fits, but I think it will. Give you an idea where the bunkhouse is up on top of the hill with the four rod portage up the stairs to get to it. Right. Packing up the Duluth pack. Not too ridiculous so far. Right. We're back at the Chick Walk Museum area. We're planning on doing the Blueberry Hill Trail which takes you up to a real scenic area up there. Before this place was a museum, it was actually a, an outfitter and a resort. That was in the it's heyday big. in the 50s. This is the Blueberry Hill Trail. It's supposed to be an outstanding view out here, so we're going to go check it out. Never had the decision put quite that pointedly before. So this More like. is the real summit of Blueberry Hill. Nice. The skinny part of Saganaga going out. That's the big part out there? That's the beginning of the big part. So that's where we're going to be going tomorrow, yeah. right up that channel. Right up that channel, and then this big lake there. you see in the distance, we're going to head around this way. Nifty little Christmas present for your relatives. Get them a bag of leeches. <laughs> little squirmy little things. Well, that's the end of a pretty long first day after uh, basically two complete 48 hours of no sleep whatsoever and 14 hours in the car and an hour of paddling for practice and then a two mile hike up the hill up to blueberry hill i can't keep my eyes open <laughs> he can't either he's laying up in the bunk up there and good uh, start to the trip no canoeing yet except for a little practice today day number one in the boundary waters is complete canoeing starts tomorrow Final gear preparations. Big day. Good morning. Welcome to uh, day number two, arguably day number three of the trip. First day of paddling, not backpacking. As you can see, it is a spectacular day. We're just getting final gear preparation going. We're going to have our little Spartan breakfast up there and then get on down here. It's about 6.40. Shuttle pulls out at 8, I believe. So the plan for today is we're going to get a tow or boat ride. Basically on these things, they put the canoes on top, you ride on the bottom, and we're going to go out basically to uh, the put-in point for 
Saginaga Lake, and then out to what they call President, or Amer I'm sorry, American Point. And they're going to drop us off there, and then we're going to paddle down um, on, on the big water today. Probably the most challenging stretch of paddling we're going to do on the very first day. From there, we're going to go pay uh, maybe a portage or two, lake or two down, and start looking for campsites. The plan for day number one of paddling. I'd love to say I'd be getting it going with Dunkin' Donuts coffee, but I don't think that's going to happen, but hopefully they'll have some coffee in here and I can get a cup of coffee to get the heart going in the morning. Yeah. I'd love to say it's Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Maybe it is. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> getting the trip going. Definitely not Dunkin' Donuts coffee, but it's still going to work just fine getting the heart beating this first morning. It's one of the first things I'm learning about canoeing is there is nothing ultra light about it. <laughs> Pack probably weighs 80 pounds, I'm guessing. Starting to get real. We're over at the boat landing for our tow. A few more minutes and we'll be heading out on the water. This is where we're headed right now, so. It looks like a an ocean. <laughs> All right, you guys go ahead and step on in for us. It's American Point. That's where we're headed right there. Party and. Okay, now we're out on. Uh, this is precisely why we paid for the tow. It'll be interesting canoeing in this stuff. It's the kind of day where you paddle and then you look to shore to see if you went forward or backwards. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine being in a canoe on this, but I guess we're going to get to find out. <laughs> this is the drop-off point, America Point. A little calmer right here, but I think once we round that point over there, we're heading up over there and then around that corner that way. I think it'll get a little more entertaining. Last shots with the real camera before I put it away in the dry bag. Here's Rick and Mike. I'll be hanging with them for a little while for safety. See how we got everything. Heaviest stuff back here with Rick since I outweigh him by probably about 70 pounds or so. Here we go. About equal parts excitement and terror. I'd feel a lot better if this was like glass smooth water, but uh, no such luck. So this is what we got. We'll figure it out. We are on the water. <laughs> I don't want to turn around quite yet. So, okay, I'm going. He needs his front engine. Out in the middle of <laughs> Saginaga, and uh, well, you can tell we're surviving it, but it isn't the most pleasant thing in the world. A little sketchy with the water coming over the boat. We're actually heading in that direction. Over here, Cache Bay, that's in Canada. But that's what it looks like out here on Saginaga on the big water. We've been paddling now for one hour, nine minutes, and we have gone two miles. A little lower pace than you'd normally expect, but we have been straight into about a 20 mile an hour wind. So there is no coasting and really no brakes because to maintain control you got to have the power up front to get over these waves otherwise the bow of the boat goes right down into the water. I'm getting it a lot more comfortable than when we started and once we get down to that point which is probably about a thousand feet away it's going to narrow down quite a bit and we can hug the Canadian shore and probably get out of this wind. So. That is Mike and Rick. It's a pretty narrow opening. <laughs> Let's see if those guys get through. Now this is much more like it. They call this the Chamber of Commerce video setting here, finally. We are on some smooth water, finally. Everything narrows down now. We first do our first portage here in a little bit. One hour, 50 minutes into it, three and a half miles, so. Forward motion of this video is provided by Rick. <laughs> Rick is filing some objection about my videotaping instead of paddling, but this is pretty enjoyable. This is like backpacking without having to walk. <laughs> we are approaching our first portage, or portage, so this will be an all new experience and I've got to kind of figure out how to do this and not destroy the Kevlar canoe. They call this a wet foot landing. You get out before your boat hits the rocks. Oh, baby, what do you got in this backpack? <laughs> our first portage is about that long. <laughs> if they were all like that, that would be just 
awesome Swamp Lake is the next one that we get in. Next one after this is Otter Creek, which is where we're going to be camping for the night. Is this tradition? Canoeing tradition is uh, Come on home! <laughs> Called slapping the bag. First portage complete. All five rods of it. Hey, it was a good warm up portage, unlike the canoeing today. I think you can probably hear it, but it's like 30 mile an hour wind. Coming straight from the direction we're going. There's nothing easy about this today. We are approaching the monument portage which is actually a real portage not like the last one we did this one's about i think 80 rods and a rod is 20 feet and i always thought it was funny that all their maps were marked with distances and rods until i realized that the voyagers the ones who initially explored this whole region their canoes were 20 feet long so that became the unit of measure for these portages and everything around here this is nice and soft here so this is a good one Portage looks like, so I gotta get out. I don't know how deep this, I'm assuming this is pretty deep muck. I think this is the one they told you, like don't get off these boardwalks unless you wanna sink up to your waist. I've got the Duluth pack. I think it's every bit of 100 pounds. <laughs> I'll grab this and I think we'll, we'll get the other pack and then I think we'll both get the canoe. So this is what a portage looks like. Looks like, Backpacking, that's where we're going. I'm not sure how far this particular portage is apparently 80 rods and 80 rods is 1600 feet or roughly about a quarter mile. You're doing it while you're carrying 100 pounds and then we're gonna do it again while we're carrying a 48 pound canoe. This is a boundary marker, United States and Canada. And I guess for pretty much the entire length of the border, they have this clear cut between the trees. Now that's a nice sight. It's our back. This is the lake we're going to be camping on. Oh, look, there's a canoe walking through the woods. Oh, I'll go help him. All loaded for the most part on Otter Creek or Otter Back. Going right around there. Now this is the Benny Ambrose plaque. One of the last residents that was able to live here, allowed to live here. And place was across the water apparently paddling into an indescribable wind the entire time here on Otterback my arms are toast and we still have like two miles to go to the nearest campsite Oop, we're going backwards you see it on the wall man it's just brutal it's this is our home for the first night in the boundary waters canoe area wilderness Given the circumstances, I feel like it's a five-star Hilton. Although this one in the Boundary Waters Paddle Planners rating system only gets three stars, and I see why. It's a pretty brutal climb up here and a tough place to land the canoe. Lots of slippery rocks. I almost fell in twice, and I'm darn glad I put this camera in a Cuban fiber dry sack because it went full on in the water. Six and a half, close to seven hours of paddling today. That was not our plan. We were thinking three, three and a half. Feels great to be here. Getting some Endurox R4, getting some water. I think I'm a little dehydrated, so doing the recovery and then we'll get on with the camp chores. Give you an indication of what we were paddling in today with the wind. Much more pleasant listening to that when you're in camp than when you're on the water paddling into it. <laughs> Let's splurge on the fire starters. So, not exactly rubbing two sticks together, but we got fire. Oh, look at that! That's the uh, just like mountain house moment. <laughs> Forest service wide gr grill. Those are just smelling pretty good. And the pans for the mushrooms and the baked potatoes are down in the fire. Mushrooms are on. Biscuits are mm, biscuiting <laughs> slowly. We may finish the biscuits in the pan. With a little of the uh, mushroom juice? Yeah. That would work a just juice. fine for me. <laughs> Dinner's getting close. Mushroom steak and baked potatoes and biscuits in the back country. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look so bad. <laughs> it's not like Mountain House. Oh, man. That's a good steak. 
That is just what was needed after a day like today. <laughs> Third time's a charm. <laughs> Snacks to it. Sinker slider here that you clip your sinker onto. Okay. And the fish won't feel the weight of the sinker. Oh, that's pretty sneaky. Okay. We're going fishing apparently here. That's new to me. Late night fishing in the boundary waters, and it's just spectacular out here. The wind's died down a little bit. This is definitely a new experience for me. Very soothing fishing in a canoe <laughs> when you don't have to get from point A to point B and the wind's not rolling it. 40 miles an hour. I have a fish. You guys might be not be able to follow though. I definitely have a fish. <laughs> I I'm trying. Uh, that's gotta be a pike. The walleye. Keep coming, keep coming. Nice! We got the first fish of the trip. Yeah, I got the first fish of the trip. Two and a half inches. Going in. Walleye, he's going in. We gave him that because we're not gonna eat him tonight. We can't keep them because we can't keep them until tomorrow. We have no refrigeration or anything. We gotta catch another one, but that guy gets a second chance. Maybe we'll catch him again tomorrow. Caught another one. <laughs> wow. salmon and grilled or uh, cream cheese and we could just brown up some of those English or the bagels in the pan. Bagels with smoked salmon and, and cream and cheese. To toasted bagels. That works for me. <laughs> Sorry we don't have any fresh onions to cut on okay. or capers. You think of the 180 pounds of gear we brought with us we could have brought some capers for the smoked or salmon. Or just like bagel. one fresh onion. Next go. time. It'll give us a reason to come back. Good morning. Welcome to uh, day number three of the trip, day number two of canoeing or paddling. And it looks to be another spectacular day. First arrived the first day, got a good feel for what it's like to be paddling out here, so that's good. Just getting rolling on day number two. The sun's just coming up. Birds are chirping, just enjoying the sounds and scenes of nature. And we'll get the day started with a little Dunkin' Donuts coffee in a French press coffee maker that Rick brought. I think I'll need to raise my pinky while I drink it this time. <laughs> Getting going on day number two. Trying to drown the leech right now. Yeah. It's deep pretty quick there. That is some calm water. Look like they're interested yet. I saw one jump out there, that's why I did this. Dunkin' Donuts coffee in the first morning in the boundary waters. We survived yesterday. It's a good way to get the second day started, along with some glass smooth water and no wind for now. Let's get the day started with some Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Oh, wait. breakfast this morning <laughs> is not honey bunches of oats with needo it's bagels toasted in the pan with cream cheese and smoked salmon it's going to be pretty tasty i'm liking this canoeing with the real food scheme i could get used to this sweet oh man smoked salmon on uh, bagels with cream cheese not so bad. Mm, man, it's definitely not mountain house. <laughs> Good first breakfast. Mm -hmm. That was really nice. Well, it feels a little lighter than yesterday. It's probably about five pounds lighter, but. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, 
stolen pack. We're just getting ready to get loaded up and get going on day number two. One last shot here before I put the camera away. We're pretty much ready. We are on the water, day number two. About three and a half hours heading over to uh, South, Arm of Knife Lake. South Arm of Knife Lake and see what we can find for a campsite. Maybe stay there a couple days. Well, we are approaching the first portage, day number two. There's some people already there, so we gotta figure out what to do here. So we got some weather coming in too. Right, this is the other side of that portage. This is Knife Lake. And we're heading up that way for the moment. There's no wind, but you can see clouds are rolling in. There wasn't supposed to be any chance of rain today, but I packed my rain gear deep in the pack. Pack your rain gear in the pack and clouds move in and maybe some rain. Ways down Knife Lake now, you can see the weather is getting ominous. Don't get many shots with the real camera here because you gotta, I gotta secure it in a dry bag. Every once in a while, pull it out instead of the GoPro just to give you a little better view of it, I guess. Doing a little bit of a map check here. I think we're going that way. But that's how you gotta figure it out. Kinda all looks the same. <laughs> and there's lots of it, so you don't wanna miss your turn. Off Knife Lake now and, and a little little bay that heads over to a portage that goes into the uh, south arm of Knife Lake, which is where we'll start looking for a campsite. I thought I'd give you the unique perspective of carrying a canoe on a portage. It's not as heavy as it looks. I think it weighs 48 pounds, but it's really awkward. It's relatively balanced, but it hits on everything, so got to be kind of careful. These Kevlar canoes are a little delicate, so you don't want to break one. This is, this is our first view of the south arm of Knife. The other end of the portage. Pretty much geared up and ready to go. Not sure where we're heading. I think down that way. Here we go. Last little stretch before camp. Hopefully. Dave's slapping the bag. Right under behind. A little I like, like that. In the bag. I like yeah. that tradition, man. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> a little uh, orange arrow, that's where we are. There's that island right there. Straight ahead of us is the island that you see that the arrow tip is pointing on. This campsite on the tip of the peninsula right there is a four star rated one. And then this up here is actually an island. And there's three campsites on it, and all of those are highly rated. So we're looking for one of those four campsites. We have uh, made it to our home for the night. This is the Four Star Hilton. You can't see the other bedrooms of the suite. Uh, they're back there. There's a really nice view back there, a really nice tent spot too. Also got the tarp set up for the first time since uh, maybe Cranberry. Rain came in pretty good. It's calming down now, so maybe it'll the rain will clear out, but it gave us a dry spot to set the gear and everything else. And... We just hunkered down Hoping the rain stops, but it doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. Oh, this is one time. of those moments when, as crappy as the situation is for us right now, it's a lot worse for those folks. It's doing swamp like. The little socks feel good. It's just all the water around them. Well, it's still raining, but we got a little patch of blue sky. So I think that stuff's all kind of rolling in here slowly, but you can see it's definitely still raining. Been under the tarp for about two hours. It took a while, but it has stopped raining for the most part. Two hours and 20 minutes, <laughs> to be exact. From the time we got the tarp set up, we've been underneath there just watching it rain. And uh, now everything is cleared out. The weather's supposed to be improving the entire rest of the trip. Pretty much sunny every day from here on out. Well, thought I'd give you a tour of our camp, such as it is. Pretty much it. Little trail here at the back of the camp that goes to a tent site, kind of right back there. And then I'm standing on what's probably going to be my home for night, a relatively flat tent spot with a, you know, decent view. Oh, the humanity! <laughs> Our farm fresh eggs, non refrigerated, that we brought along on the trip, sort of taking it on the chin a little bit. Maybe seven survivors, which we'll now be accelerating the eating of to make sure we stay with seven survivors. Yeah, I don't think we want to portage them again. Yeah, uh, it doesn't. That's pretty rough. The sun has actually come out. Uh, 
not quite full yet, but it will here pretty shortly. Full on sun now. We're taking advantage to dry a bunch of wet stuff. You can see what the weather has become. It is gorgeous, and I think it's going to stay just like this for the next four days. Give you an idea how clear this water is. You can see that tree and part of it's above water but a bunch of it's slamming relatively deep underwater. It's a pretty clear lake. Heading out to look for dinner and <laughs> for some trout or something but hopefully we catch something we'll eat them this time. Yeah leeches. <laughs> Apparently the good stuff. Good bait. Nasty putting it on the hook though that's for sure. Mission for walleye now. Well this is kind of interesting and not so pleasant. There's our beautiful blue skies that if we've had since I showed them when they first rolled in. Look at what is apparently rolling in. And there's all kinds of thunder coming from that direction. And I do believe is it, he it is heading straight this way. Little tiny walleye that we got. And ready to make him into dinner. Wow, appetizer. <laughs> Snack. <laughs> got a little filet working there. There's one. There you go. That's how it's done. Here's what we're featuring now. That looks pretty nasty there, but there's the really juicy stuff and it's coming straight at us. What I'm hoping is you can kind of see, even on the other side of it, like lighter blue sky. So maybe this is just a squall line that'll pass fairly quickly, but I'm sure as it passes, it will be quite exciting. This is the point in Caddyshack where they said, really heavy stuff isn't going to come down for quite some time now. So I thought we were done with this, but uh, apparently not. I think this is a squall line, so hopefully it will pass quickly, but hopefully we'll still get a dinner out of this after this passes. That's quite a look, given everything we've uh, just experienced. The sun came out and we're getting ready to eat a late dinner. I don't even know what time it is. I don't even want to look, but the sun's at least still out, so it's not that late. It's maybe 8. 30. We got a little daylight yet left, but we're gonna have some pizzas in the skillet. That sounds pretty yummy right now. Pizza preparations have begun. You can't go wrong with all those ingredients. I see pepperoni, Italian cheese, some pizza mushrooms. crust, mushrooms, just like mountain house. Let's say you're ready for toppings. There's the sauce. Would you like onions? No. Nope. Oh yeah, I'll have some onions. Pepperoni? Uh, definitely. <laughs> we'll do it. Yeah, go for it. That doesn't look so bad, huh? Let's see what the bottom looks like. Ooh, the bottom is hot. Perfect. Bigger than the plates. <laughs> I love this flat rock they got here. Mm. It's going to take some work, but I think it's going to be pretty good. The crust is like perfect. Mm. Mm. Oh man, that is unbelievable. Mm. It doesn't look bad. Second. Dinner is served. Wally the walleye <laughs> gave his last true measure of devotion <laughs> to give us our second dinner. Oh, that's really good. This little guy was swimming about an hour ago. <laughs> mm. Probably shut the camera shot up wrong. <laughs> we were supposed to be sitting on the log, but <clears throat> we didn't quite make it that far. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Well, I do. Day number two in the boundary waters. Really good day, kind of a long day, like the first day. Had some storms, had some rain, had some thunderstorms and sunshine, and now we've got mosquitoes. <laughs> They're swarming almost bad enough to get the head net out. And these ones seem to be somewhat impervious to permethrin and DEET. <laughs> 
they don't seem to be bothered by it in the least. End of day number two. We'll see you tomorrow. Cocktails by the pool. Good morning. Welcome to uh, day number four of the trip, day number three of canoeing. Uh, we woke up with a bunch of friends just outside the tent and uh, I'm thinking about getting the bug net on. They're pretty bad up there, a little better down here. I'm not sure what we're going to be doing today. I'm not sure if we're going to stay here or if we're going to move on a little further. We were talking about doing some little adventurous stuff around here, but I uh, haven't finalized the plans yet. But Rick's down fishing and trying to catch a little early morning breakfast or dinner for tonight. I'm not sure which. He's got the coffee press, so I, gotta, I don't know where it is. But we'll get going on some Dunkin' Donuts coffee here. Start of day number three. Food bags were just hanging by a thread. The carabiner actually bent and broke. Now I know the load limit on these is not equivalent to whatever we were putting on it. <laughs> Lucky that didn't come crashing down. Ah, I skipped the prep part. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts coffee on the south arm of Knife Lake. Sharing it with a few mosquitoes this morning, but still awfully tasty. Yet another, it's not mountain house meal. What's going in next are the uh, fresh eggs. A spicy sausage on the left and a little shelf stable bacon on the right, just crisping it up a little bit. Hope you're hungry. Yeah, should be good. Nice breakfast. Real eggs. Farm fresh, non refrigerated. Almost done. Breakfast the champions here. That's part of the breakfast and then the rest of the breakfast. Nobody's going hungry today. At least not for breakfast. I'm gonna keep the hash browns and the veggies separate, but uh, to keep this a little more manageable, but that doesn't look so bad. Mm. It was a little tough keeping the eggs intact through all those portages, but we had seven survivors out of the 12. That, mm. That was so good. Yeah, getting ready to go out on a little day paddle, like a day hike <laughs> from our base camp here. We decided to stay in the same camp for a second night. Much like yesterday, there's a little ominous weather floating in. Paddling our way out to Thunder Point. Which apparently has a fantastic view. A little ominous weather. Looks a little more ominous, and I think that's the direction everything's coming from. But pleasant paddle out to Thunder Point. Well, this is the landing, the Thunder Point, and the view. That's the start of the trail. We're heading up that way. The trail up to Thunder Point is a little steep. Feels like a backpacking trip now, and it got even steeper. You gotta work for the view. I guess. Well, we're slapping the bag. The <laughs> ceremonial slapping of the now very depleted wine bag in honor of reaching the summit up here. Yay! <laughs> that was quite the climb. Oops. Worth it though, man. That is spectacular. Yeah. Closing in on camp after a successful outing to Thunder Point. There is our camp. post a day trip fishing trying to catch us some more walleye for dinner <laughs> that was pretty good last night it was just a snack but it was pretty darn tasty you got a little fish got him no it's kind of too big it's a tip oh well, it's pretty nice little fishy little bass for big bass big bass that whoop oh, hang on there's our little fishy he's Ooh, 17 and a half. That's a pretty big bass. <laughs> I'd give you 18. 18? Oh, sweet. Ah. Dinner will soon be served. I'll spare you more of the gory details, but our, uh, our bass is providing us a second uh, part of dinner tonight. 
fire is going. What's this thing? All right, dinner tonight, besides our Billy the Bass, <laughs> is a uh, good to go Thai curry from Maine. It's real good stuff, but it's uh, pretty much vegetarian. So we're gonna add some uh, Mountain House uh, diced chicken. Not exactly the steak we had on night number one or the pizza that we had last night, but still pretty darn tasty. We'll have that and then we'll have uh, Billy the Bass as a, a post-dinner appetizer afterward. Gonna be eating well again tonight. All right, there we go. Put it in our Big Sky International Cozy. That'll keep it piping hot until we're ready to eat it in 20 minutes, it says. Dinner is served. There's enough here for like six people, so why don't you scoop out how much you want. But I've got garlic naan with mine. I know. <laughs> Holy smokes. Man. No one's going hungry on this trip. Give me a plate. Oh. That's good. Oh, that bread. Oh, really good. A lot more meat than last night. Has done us well. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's as good as Wally the Walleye. No, uh, well, it's tough to beat Wally. morning. Welcome to day number five of the trip. A fourth day of actual paddling and it is a gorgeous morning on south arm of Knife Lake. It's a moving day today. We're heading over to, uh, we call it Ogish Lake, but it's got a really long Indian name. We've got I think four or maybe five portages to do today. All relatively short. We've got three days to go two nights, Ogeech Lake, and I think we're gonna make it, try to make it all the way to Seagull Lake, which is where the outfitter is. Getting going on day number four. Uh, in a little bit here, we'll get the old French press coffee maker out and do some French pressed Dunkin' Donuts coffee to get it going. Got the morning fire going here, and it's not for heat or anything. This is actually gonna be our cooking fire because we're running a little low on canister fuel. Kind of misjudged how much we'd be going through eating real food. <laughs> Maybe we can just pour the eggs on top of the meat. I'd be fine with that. Scrambled eggs with bacon and sausage again for breakfast. I could get used to this manner of eating in the back of the tree. <laughs> that is definitely not like Mountain House. <laughs> breakfast fire, cooking fire was a success. A little salsa, because why not? <laughs> Best backcountry restaurant. Good service. <laughs> How much you got? Dunkin' Donuts Coffee, a beautiful campsite. Morning number four of the South Arm Knife River. Knife Lake. Take 16. Dunkin' Donuts Coffee at a beautiful campsite in the South Arm of Knife Lake. Heading over to Ogeechee, which is between here and the Outfitter. So, heading back. All right, we are here at this site labeled four. We're gonna paddle through here, through here, 
we're going to take this portage and I think along this portage there's a little spur that you can go see the waterfalls and we're going to come down through Eddy Lake into Jenny yeah I think we have to come into Annie and then into Ogish. I'm looking for campsites up here. I've targeted like in here if we can okay. and then eventually we're going to exit out that way. Sounds like a good day. If we're lucky to get there early enough we may do a side trip to see M Mueller Falls. We are geared up and ready to start day number four. Just need to haul everything down to the water. It's a glorious day. I think temperature is supposed to be in up your 70s. No chance of rain the next few days. I think tomorrow is going to be a repeat it today which isn't a bad way to have our last full day out here getting ready to get going on day number four just head on down to the canoes and we'll be paddling not such a crappy day on the south arm knife lake some people are already heading out in our direction that's where we're going right down that way well i don't normally film on the water with the big boy camera <laughs> the z6 but man look at this water in this day we're about a mile into it the south arm heading to the first portage which is about two miles up here but about 3.2 miles an hour compared to that first day in the wind and the ocean swells <laughs> where we did 1.7 cool little waterfall right next to the portage i have no idea what it's called the kids are having a good time and getting cleaned up in there some uh, good over the falls action on the video here. <laughs> the up close and personal look of a portage here. Not very long, but a lot of work when you're carrying a probably 90 pound pack now. And 70 feet uphill. Look like fun. <laughs> Trust me, it's not much fun. Very awkward. 70 feet doesn't sound like a lot until you're carrying a canoe up a hill. <laughs> That's what you do over and over and over again. And, you know, here's the other side of the portage, Eddy Lake. I think it's a little lake. So we're going to be doing a portage again in a minute. That's the top side. So that's the first of four, I think four, maybe five portages for the day. Well, that's what they're like. They're not real long. This one was probably only 30 rods or 600 feet. Doesn't sound like anything, but this one was, like I said, it was 70 foot elevation gain. It felt like a lot more than that when you're carrying huge pack or awkward canoe on your shoulder. It's all part of being out here. That's what you got to do. So. This is uh, Jenny Lake, the other side of the portage. Really pretty. Short one here too, then we got another one. <laughs> We're doing a different technique going from Jenny Lake into Annie Lake, which is the next one, Annie, <laughs> my daughter's name. A one foot elevation gain <laughs> on this portage. So we're just gonna carry it all the way. Up. This is uh, Annie Lake, named after my daughter Annie, Annie Best Lake. This is it. Short little lake, but she's pretty. Well, we're at the end of Annie's Lake, Annie Best Lake. Our portage is here somewhere, but it looks like we're entering a swamp. And then this is our fourth and final portage, and it takes us into Ogish Lake, which is where we plan to camp tonight. Although right there is what a portage looks like in the boundary waters. Here. Fourth and final of the day on to Ogish Lake after this. Now this is a real portage, single portage here. Rick's got the canoe and my backpack, which probably weighs 50 pounds. I've got everything else. <laughs> a hundred pound Duluth pack, all the poles, paddles and the day pack with everything else okay that was a relatively straightforward portage after four of them today and i don't know how many for the trip we're starting to get it down a little better but this is ogish come come on see lake hopefully camping on this little lake here a lot of campsites on this lake but very very popular too so we'll just be looking along the way because that's the de destination we're heading we'll stop when we find one this is ogish come on see lake Man, is it beautiful. A lot of people, I think. A bunch of people out fishing, which means they're probably camped down here somewhere. Looking for a bunch of campsites kind of along there. But just keep going out that way. Well, it may only be rated three stars according to Paddle Planner. That's a five-star Hilton to me. Right, here's the scene. 
It's the narrows, that's why they call it the narrows. It kind of necks down to this little opening. Pretty pleasant day of paddling today. It really wasn't all that difficult. Not a lot of wind to fight with, a lot of calm water, good speed. All the portages were kind of, <laughs> they slow you down a bit. There's a lot of work involved with each one, all four of them. This is the reward at the end of the day. They have a really nice sight. Now the one thing I would say about being out here from my first experience is campsites can be an issue. The number of times we've seen people, and we were in this situation ourselves on the first night, paddling around long after you wanted to be done, and it's a lot of work, you could be battling wind, and you don't know, there's no way of knowing which sites are occupied and which aren't, and each one is quite a ways from the other one. So almost every site we've come to, 90% of them you find occupied. I would plan on coming in, giving yourself plenty of time, find an area, a big wide area where you'd find any site available that would be good to you, and just plan on having to keep going if you can't find one. Be here? Yeah, right on the okay. bottom there. Right on the narrow there, that's, and here's Ogish, what is it? Okay. Ogish Kamansi. Kamansi, we're heading up this way. So we're talking about, there's apparently a waterfall somewhere on this portage. Mueller Lake. Let me show you what we did today. There's Jenny Lake. There's Eddie Lake. I'm guessing this is the south arm of Knife. Mm -hmm. Well, we're out on a day hike or day paddle to uh, a waterfall that's close to our camp. Uh, Mueller Falls. It's probably about a mile from camp, and then you got to do a 105 rod portage, a little over 2,000 feet. We don't know where the falls is if it's close to the the lake or if it's all the way on the other side of the portage. Probably do some fishing all the way back. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan to me get some dinner. Well we're closing in on something. This wasn't our plan. We were going to go to the portage and then apparently there was some sort of trail but then we saw this a little further down so we're not sure if we can see the falls from here or not but probably the end of them I'm guessing. See what we can see up the river a little bit. I don't think that's the falls. <laughs> Maybe it is. It's pretty cool though. We didn't find a waterfall, but there was supposed to be a side trail down that portage trail. But we never saw anything that remotely looked like a trail. And now if this is Mueller Lake. Pretty lake, just like all of them. Two loons. Cool. Good to see two loons taking off. This big nasty thing I caught. I think the northern pike. Oh, and <laughs> now I have to get him off the line. And I do not like doing that. They're just big ugly fish with teeth. <laughs> oh, he got my line. Another one. <laughs> now this is how you do it. Uh, it's up to you. I mean, I'll oh, eat them. Like this is uh, what we do for firewood <laughs> in the Boundary Water. I collected all that because there's no firewood around these campsites. We gotta go hunt for it. Got a pretty good fire going. That's gonna be our cooking fire. We don't have much canister fuel, so we're trying to make sure we have enough for coffee in the morning. That should be good to cook over. Dinner tonight is uh, not steak on the grill, and it is not pizza, and it is not farm fresh eggs and bacon. It is stovetop stuffing, the packet gravy, Orida, instant mashed potatoes and uh, the rest of the mountain house uh, freeze-dried chicken. The, the concept of this dinner was a Thanksgiving dinner out in the back country and I think we have hit the mark on that. Mmm. Stuffing and the chicken are good too. We got the uh, what's mashed it? potatoes are in the, the gravy uh, gravy boat. <laughs> Titanium kettle gravy boat. That doesn't look too bad. Not a bad setting for dinner, huh? Mmm. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Thanksgiving. There was a littler one earlier. The bugs are going after your bug, but not the fish. 
You see the turtle there? He's sticking his head above the water. Is this what you're looking at, buddy? I want that fish bait. Is he following it? Let's see if he follows. That is a ginormous turtle. Look at how big that thing is. That's his head. His body is like there. They'll come back and terrorize us in the middle of the night. Good morning. Welcome to day number five in the Boundary Waters and starts out as another Really crappy day. Actually, just absolutely spectacularly beautiful. So looks like it's going to be clear again. A lot like yesterday, but maybe a little bit warmer. And today we are heading back to Seagull Lake, which is where the outfitter is and the car is parked. We're not going all the way. We're planning on camping on the western side of it. So that gives us about three and a half hours with three pretty decent portages, about twice as long or maybe a little longer than yesterday. One of them is actually 105 rods long, which is 2,100 feet or a little less than half a mile. Getting going on day number four. I'm doing some packing just to save some time later, but a little bit here. I think as soon as Rick gets up, we'll get some French press Dunkin' Donuts coffee going to get the day started right. Yes, another privy scene. This is uh, what you can expect for a privy in the Boundary Waters. They've all been exactly like this, only this is the first one that actually had a lid. It always makes you a little squeamish when there's no lid on it on what critter might have grown down in there. our Titan titanium pot and we'll over the fire cooking it. And breakfast this morning is something unique. This is a strawberry cranberry, cranberry bannock. I think the French voyagers, right? Were the ones Voyageur. Who, yeah, Voyageur I think that's French. Were the ones who first explored this region. One of their food staples was bannock, which is kind of a flat bready scone kind of thing that you cook in a pan. In their honor, that is what we are having this morning for breakfast. I used that rock to try to level it. it looks pretty good. Well, we'll see. My first bannock. Mine Rick's too. first bannock. <laughs> I'm going to typically show you the making of the Dunkin' Donuts coffee. In the case of French press, other than pouring the water in, it's sort of like this. It's a little harder to press than I thought. The bannock cooking on the fire. Dunkin' Donuts coffee on day number five in the Boundary Waters. Getting ready to head over to Seagull Lake today. That's uh, where the car's parked and the outfitter is. We're not going all the way there. We're gonna be about five miles away when we can. The trip's coming, getting close to being over, so <laughs> kind of see the end from here. This setting just absolutely spectacular. Just never gets old. It's kind of what makes these trips a nice cup of coffee in the morning in the woods with all the sounds of nature around you. The bannock has been flipped and I do say it looks pretty darn tasty. Let's we'll see if the uh, flavor matches the wonderful look, but that stuff looks pretty good. The serving of the bannock here. I've already tried it. It's very good. A little grape jelly packet. Look at that. I don't know what I could equate it to. Something you get at the fair. <laughs> but it's really tasty. Well, we are basically geared up, getting ready to load the canoes. Canoe. Get ready on day number five. Left the camp 
actually better than we found it because we left some firewood for somebody. We are on the water. End of the portage after Ogish Kamansi, and this is Kingfisher Lake. We won't go very far here, and then we'll have our next portage. Whew, I would have showed you what that one looked like, but we're single portaging now. Oh, it takes all hands. <laughs> I couldn't really film. Yeah, we're so. paddling on Kingfisher Lake, and you can tell it's, if anything, the wind's a little at our back, and it's dead calm. It's really nice paddling today. We got another portage up here in 2,000 feet. This is what it single portage looks like. Okay, has the backpack and the canoe. I have everything else. <laughs> Fortunately, it's a short one. It's a lot of work, man. Only one more portage to go on this trip, though. That's a good feeling. Getting better at that portage thing. That one was pretty quiet. <laughs> Do the single portage, get the boat in the water, dump both packs right in the boat, grab the rest of your stuff, and you go. That's probably three times as fast as the first one. This is uh, Jasper Lake. Last one before Seagull. So this is Jasper Lake. Obviously in a burned out area. Totally different look than some of the other stuff. Burned out area, Jasper Lake. The campsites here are basically on stuff like that. And they've all been empty so far. That's probably why. Not real desirable if you ever want to come to Jasper Lake. So this is what you call a traffic jam at a portage. <laughs> you got one group that was coming this way, a group of three canoes that's wanting to go that way, as are we. That's what you end up running into out here. And no, nothing you can do except wait. <laughs> the last one being the last portage. There were going to be three today. There's actually four. This is the long one, 105 rods, 2,100 feet. Next on the other side of this is Seagull Lake. No more portages after this one. Last one of the trip, and then we're looking for campsite mode. That's the technique. Does that look like fun? 50 pound backpack and a 48 pound awkward as hell canoe. We have now entered Seagull Lake after that joyous 2100 foot, 105 ride portage. Oh, we're in looking for campsite mode, but we are on the same lake with the outfitter and the car. Ah, so we have our home for tonight and I don't know if we are just being spectacularly lucky but uh, this one's just outstanding and that view is just spectacular that Seagull Lake and in the general direction where the outfitter is so many of these sites the one we had on the narrows there last night people came by and said that's the best site on this entire lake rated by some website or whatever this one is just outstanding and we're on Seagull Lake which is notorious for you don't need any portages to get out here so you go to the outfitter Paddle out, find a spot out here, park yourself for a week and party. These spots are really hard to come by. I don't know why this one's available. If the people just pulled out or what, or we are just spectacularly lucky this whole trip. But... Pretty scenic water gathering spot. <laughs> Get a little water down in the bag and I'll get the siphon better. Most fishing, and that is our campsite you see in the background from a different angle. I just went for a swim. It felt remarkably good. Rick had dropped his knife about eight, six feet down in the water. And I was thinking about going for a swim anyway, so I volunteered to go try to fish it out. If you ever come here, boy, the water is nice. And it actually kind of gets yourself clean again. I definitely recommend it if you come here. What is it? Another uh, bass, I think. Another Billy the Bass? That isn't that bad.
You can uh, call them pizza biters. I think they're those frozen Tostino pizza things. Not quite frozen. Not quite frozen now, that's for sure. They will be tasting pretty good. You got a little oil in the pan. We're going to crisp them up and that'll be the first course. We're basically cleaning out everything we haven't eaten yet. So this is going to be, you can see it in the background, a little Spam, a little Couscous, a little ba Billy the Bass version too. Getting toasty brown and delicious, but not quite done yet. This is going to be good. Good first course. Flip the pizza popper things over. They're looking mighty tasty. The second side and we'll be eating them here in a few minutes. That's what they're calling it all. Oh, yeah. Pizza poppers are done. I'm putting a little leftover pizza sauce from our pizza night. Mm. Oh, those are good. A lot better than uh, when you put them in the microwave at home, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Cooking them this way in this setting. Mm. Rick's over there having Italian couscous and um, a pizza sort of thing with two tortillas and pizza sauce and some Parmesan cheese in honor of Carl. Thank you for these ideas, Carl. We're having Spam singles. I never eat this stuff at home, but it sure tastes good on the trail. Ah, the sound of flavor. <laughs> the Spam is served. Rick's back there getting uh, Billy the Bass Jr. ready for his uh, final sacrifice. Mm. Oh man, that is so good. Like a combination of a hot dog and bacon and ham, <laughs> smoked sausage. Mm. Billy the Bass Jr., pretty darn tasty. Course number three for our gourmet meal tonight. Pretty good last dinner in the Boundary Waters. like the conservation corridor. She said when I came back from the glacier, it's like my eyes were like going in circles. I hope you can do that to you. I'm not too picture this up there. Good morning. Welcome to day number six of the canoe trip. I can honestly say I have never said that about a backcountry trip before. This is the longest backcountry trip I've ever done. Beautiful day again today. Today it's a quick one in that direction. That's Seagull Lake. Outfitters on the other end of the lake and so is the car. So we'll be finishing the trip. We've got about four and a half miles to go over to the Outfitters which should take us probably a little under two hours and then hot shower over there and we'll be done with this little bad boy. Just getting going, getting the packing going for the last day. We're going to do a quick breakfast, no fires this morning. We're going to use the last of the canister fuel and do some oatmeal and some Dunkin Donuts coffee to get it going. But for now, just getting some packing going. But let's get going on day number six. started for the last batch of Dunkin Donuts coffee out here with my new little stove. Stove worked great. Dunkin Donuts coffee on the sixth and final day in the Boundary Waters. Ready to uh, head back to uh, civilization. We've got the uh, civilization vortex sucking us in right now. Thoughts of uh, real food, cold beer, hot shower. <laughs> oh, somehow tastes better maybe when you know where you're heading. 
And breakfast this morning is Quaker oatmeal. Uh, maple and brown sugar and apple and cinnamon. And I'm going to throw in some, the last of our freeze dried strawberries. Pretty simple, but pretty good. Keep us fueled up while we paddle the five miles across Seagull Lake to the Seagull Outfitter. Mm, that's really good. Real simple, but perfect for the last day. Geared up, have camp broken down. 15 mile an hour tailwind heading straight in the direction we're going. Sort of makes up for uh, day number one. Loaded up and ready to paddle. I realize I've never really shown a shot of fully loaded canoe. That's my seat right there. That's what we've been doing. So here we go. We're going on day number six to the outfitter. We are paddling on day number six, the final day. A glorious day for a canoe trip. Basically right between those two little islands in front of us. A straight line. A very healthy tailwind which is gonna speed things up. Doesn't to look too rough so this should be a lot of fun. Here's the scene, about a uh, quarter of the way there, I guess. Not a bad day to be doing it, huh? Spectacular. Well, that is a pretty significant milestone. That is the boundary between the boundary waters and the non-boundary waters. So that means we have made it pretty much to the end of our trip. We're out of the boundary waters now, and the channel to go to the outfitter is just down this way, about 100 yards, and then I think another half mile or quarter mile and we'll be at the outfitters and this trip will be done so basically made it that's pretty cool well there is a sight for sore eyes and hands and shoulders and knees and pretty much everything else that is our outfitter and we are back it's good to be back in civilization here's to a good trip cheers a little line and kugel on the way out at seagull outfitters there we go it was a good trip. It tastes good though. That's pretty darn good. Good way to end it. Yeah. So there you have it, the fourth trip of the 2021 season. The Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness is in the books. I came into this trip a rookie and complete noob when it came to traveling by canoe in the backcountry. And that first day I walked into the outfitter and they said, are you excited? And I said, I'm equal parts excited and terrified. And that first day did the terrified part justice. From there, it got a lot better. That great campsite we had for two days on South Arm and the day trip over to Thunder Point, the incredible views. That little spot we had that some people said was the best campsite in the whole Boundary Waters and the little narrows on, on Ogish. And then that wonderful spot we had on the point last night over on Seagull. It really came down to a beautiful trip in a beautiful area. The Boundary Waters are absolutely spectacular for canoeing. In all, we paddled for 75 miles, which is 75 miles more than I had ever done before. <laughs> so I think for a first time or my first time out, I did okay. A trip to the Boundary Waters has been on my bucket list for a very long time, and now I've checked it off. And it was also a great paddle. 